What's up guys, Ivan here. We are in the Netherlands at the moment. We played the Passport Festival yesterday and we're about to go to Rotterdam. There are a couple of things that didn't go that well yesterday. I'm gonna talk about more of it uh, later when I'm back home, but let's say it was a rough show. <laughs> so um, I think you guys are gonna benefit from listening to the story and the reasoning why having reliable gear and being prepared for shows and festivals especially is really worth it. I applied to that music school 10 years ago. What's up guys, Ivan Garranza here and now I am back home after our shows in the Netherlands. We played at the Fast Pop Festival on Friday and we played in Rotterdam on Saturday. And I have to say it was a great experience. I really liked the Netherlands, a really cool country. And especially I really liked Rotterdam. It's a beautiful city and the weather was amazing that day. So we got to do a little bit of sightseeing that day, which was great. But about the issues that we had during the gig. Um, we played this festival on Friday, the Passport Festival. We left Germany at 2 p.m. We arrived at around close to 6 p.m. more or less. And our stage time was 9.30 to 10.30. But we had to be already behind the stage setting things up at seven or quarter past seven. We had until 8.30 when we had to go into the stage and start doing sound check, which was one hour in total, and then play. So we started setting up, the space was not that big, but while we were setting up and putting the drum set on the riser and so on, the guitar player noticed that we didn't have, or he forgot his guitar straps, both of them. He had two guitars and none of them had a guitar strap. So he had to start figuring out what he's going to do <laughs> and asking the crew of the festival if they have maybe a backup guitar strap or they could find one for him because we had to set up, of course. And what ended up happening was that <laughs> they gave him a piece of rope that we then attached to the guitar strap, which of course was not really comfortable, but at least that sort of got him through the gig. But we were setting up, you know, and what I did is because the space was fairly cramped, like I said, is I took the flight case out of the cabinet, put my amp on top of the cabinet, put my pedal board on top of my cabinet and everything so that I only had to push one thing into the stage. Now my setup, you know, it takes me three to five minutes tops and that's been, been very generous with my <laughs> time. Um, so I, I set up fairly quickly. I only have to plug my pedal board and then plug two cables and I'm good to go, you know, so I'm gig ready fairly quickly. Um, but what happened was that we had to, of course, connect our inner rack to front of house and get everything ready, get our frequencies on our inner packs ready. And that all took a bit of time. Then we had some issues with the SPD from the drums not going the signal not getting to front of house, so we had to check that. And our guitar player is the one who mostly checks the things. So he was fairly busy during sound check. And we did notice that his guitar amp, which was a backline gear amp, had a broken speaker <laughs> during sound check. So because he was so busy helping the front house crew and you know the other members of the band getting everything ready. He didn't have that much time to check his stuff. So when it was about or time to sound check, his guitar amp was farting out constantly and the volumes were dropping. It sort of it sounded very distorted, but not in a good way, you know, like really like when you have a broken speaker, so it's farting out constantly. It was a really unpleasant sound. And we didn't really have time to check that thoroughly or find out what the real problem was. Now, we did have a spare, but it was in the car. So 
we didn't really have the time to take it out, put it onto the stage and mic it up because, like I said, he was fairly busy during soundcheck, checking the other things. And, well, we had to play the gig with a broken guitar amp. And massive respect to him because he got through the gig. Uh, his pseudo guitar strap opened up mid-show, so we had to really fix it again mid-show. Oh, he was holding the guitar from a couple of songs without a strap. So very uncomfortable situation for him, but he got it through, so massive respect to him. But on top of that, the acoustics of the room were really strange because it was a really big venue. So we saw it was kind of like a, like a tent, like a really big tent, so really high ceiling, and also the room stretched really far out back. So it was more or less like a church environment. So a lot of reverb, right? So our monitor sound, which is uh, through in-ears, still sound, sounded kind of weird. So what I can suggest to do in those situations is to either close as much mics as possible that you don't necessarily need because the reverb is going to fit into them or have them you know, very, very quietly because otherwise... The audience is going to creep into that. The rebounds of the room are going to creep into your mics and it's going to sound really boomy and kind of strange in your mix. So what I do in those cases is really, you know, close completely as many mics as I can and just, you know, use the very, very, very essentials on my mix to play. Now, I had a great sound. Um, I monitor myself mostly with the bass amp and my my own signal through in-ears so that I can feel the bass. I had the drums. I could hear very well, but still it sounded kind of strange for me as well a little bit. But I still could perform very well. But I know that the rest of the band was not feeling very comfortably with the monitor mix in that stage. Um, so for me, the lesson in those cases, because, you know, when you're in the chaos of setting things up, you don't have a a really long sound check where you have to really be ready quickly to test songs and check, check signals and then play is to have a very streamlined setup. So the more things you have plugged in, you know, the more chances something is going to go wrong. And if you take a, a long time, you know, twisting knobs and setting the EQ and the knobs of every pedal, that's just, those are things that really take time. And especially on festivals, you have to be very quick when setting up because, you know, it's like, okay, get your things there, plug everything as quickly as you can, and then sound check and then play. So that's one of the reasons why I went with Quad Cortex because I know I only have to power it on and I'm good to go. If for some reason it dies, I still have my Noble DI or whatever other DI that I could put here that I'm no... It's going to send a signal to front of house. And if this dies, the other DI, I can still take the DI out of my amp. So those are three things that I can do to save my life in case my signal dies. And if for some reason that will also die, I can plug directly to the um, ini rack that we have because there's a split. So I can send that signal also to front of house as well. Um, so I try to minimize the points of error that could happen during my setup. Like I said, it takes me at the most three to five minutes to set up. And always before leaving to a gig, I check that I have everything that I need. Of course, that's important. You got to be prepared when, you know, shit hits the fan and know how to react. But it's something that you learn, I think, along the way. You know, sometimes, let's say... You break a string, you gotta know how to react to that. You might, maybe you forget your strap or your strap breaks or it drops. Um, maybe your preamp fails on the bass. Maybe you run out of batteries on your preamp. Maybe your in your pack runs out of batteries. What do you do there? So there are things that are going to happen at some point and you gotta know how to roll with the punches. But of course, the best thing you can do is prepare <laughs> to fix those situations and have some solutions ready that can help you to get through the gig. So I hope you guys liked the video. And just to tease a little bit, a friend of mine lent me his 
Caveman DI and I'm gonna play with it for the next couple of days and then probably do a video on it to share my thoughts. I have no affiliation to the company, but it's a pretty cool DI and I am enjoying using it so far. I haven't had much time to test it, but so far it's been pretty cool. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content that's coming to the channel. Catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.